In this video we are going to refurbish this Xbox 360S model 1439. Here's a look at the tools and supplies that I will use to do the work to this console. First thing you'll need to do is to remove these plastic vents followed by the bezel. These bezels on each end of the console can be removed without breaking the plastic with use of a pick or a small flathead screwdriver working back and forth to loosen the clips as you pull out on the bezel. This can be a little tricky but again you want to start at one end of the bezel with a flathead screwdriver and work to free the clips all the way around and then the bezel will pop off the council. Next we will take out the single screw holding in the Wi-Fi card and then remove the assembly. Now it's time to split the case. Starting at one side, you'll want to use the small screwdriver or a pick to loosen the clips, freeing the two halves from one another. As I split the two halves, I use a small screwdriver to keep them from clipping back together. I then remove back some of the Xbox 360 label to have access to the very small pinhole that will split the left side of the case. Now the bottom half of the case will be free for removal. Next up, we'll remove the five long screws that hold the top part of the case to the chassis. Here I use a black Sharpie marker just to indicate which holes that the five screws go in. With the screws removed, the top half of the case will now detach from the chassis. Be very careful at this point as the ribbon cable for the power button attaches to the circuit board and needs to be removed as seen here. If required for cleaning, the tin shield can be removed from the top half of the case. We can now move forward with the removal of the disk drive starting by first unplugging the data and power cables from the back of the drive. Here I simply use my fingernail to pop off the LED trim piece. Next we will remove the two screws holding in the hard drive tray. Note that one is in the back of the unit and one will be underneath. Using little force you can remove the rear trim piece from the chassis. Now it's time to remove the fan shroud using caution not to tear the foam. The hard drive tray will lift straight out once you move the wires out of the way. Now it's time to take out the two screws holding the fan to the heat sink. There are two screws holding on this front circuit board.
As we did with the five main case screws, I'm once again going to mark the location of these screws before removal. Note that these screws hold in the motherboard as well as the shim for the disk drive. Lastly, I'll remove the four small screws holding the heat sink clamp. One of the screws removed from the bottom of the case hold in place this disk drive shim. Now the entire motherboard is free and can be removed from the metal tray. At this point the console is completely disassembled and ready for individual part cleaning. The next step in the refurbishment process is to service the disk drive. Again, I will mark the locations of the screws as they're being removed for assistance when reassembling. Gently using a pick, you can open the disk drive and then pull the tray completely open. Here I trim the foam piece around the disk drive as I find it's easier than removing the entire piece. Most dirt, debris, or grease found within the disk drive can be removed with rubbing alcohol or simple Windex. We also have a new tube of white lithium grease that we will use to lube the slides as well as the tray. Using caution around the sensitive electronics, I use a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol to remove any of the old grease. To access the bottom portion of this disk drive, we will need to loosen the clips and remove these three ribbon cables carefully. Once they are removed, I simply set the small circuit board just out of the way to gain access to the rest of the disk drive. After cleaning is complete, I simply apply a small amount of white lithium grease to a Q-tip and re-lube all of the surfaces. It is important that the ribbon cables are completely reseated and that the clips are locked before reassembly. Disk drive models do vary, but as seen here, there is a thermal pad on this circuit chip within the unit. The last step in servicing this disk drive will be to gently clean the laser using 99% IPA. This unit is now ready for reassembly.
Using a small screwdriver, we're going to remove the clamp for the heatsink. This process can be a bit difficult, but just be patient and be cautious not to slip and damage any of the motherboard components. Here we can see the condition of the old thermal paste that's dried and probably no longer transferring heat as it should. Again, we're going to use some IPA and Q-tips to clean off the old thermal paste from the GPU as well as the heatsink. Once satisfied that both have been sufficiently cleaned, it's time to apply new thermal paste. An always contentious topic is the amount of thermal paste required to transmit heat correctly. I've found that applying about a pea-sized quantity works well for this application. Now we're ready to reverse the process and begin reassembly of the console. As a reminder, you must use caution when reattaching the power button ribbon cable to the front circuit board. Don't forget to lock the clamp. If this is your first time completing a project similar to this, it's important to make sure that you take pictures while you're disassembling and keep your screws organized as you take them out of the council.